11% across the board tax cut? And that goes with the session with you, Dan. Um, across the board cuts, I, I think, um, is horrible. It's legislature's job to uh, decide where we're going to uh, make the cuts and spend the money. So legislature should really be in session. Truly, right now, the reason I think the legislature is not in session is because people are running for political office right now. And if they go back in session, their, their ability to win um, is going to be diminished. So I think it was a political decision that the governor is making the, uh, taking, uh, with, uh, using the executive order, the executive powers to uh, uh, have the cuts made. Um, we should not do cross-the-board cuts. We, there's areas that, sh that uh, will suffer miserably if we do cross-the-board cuts. Um, and there's uh, areas of government that have been cut too much already. So uh, cross-the-board cuts I'm not in favor of. Legislature should be back in session making the critical decisions. Uh, cross-board cuts are a very <coughs> blunt, you know, cutting with an ax rather than a scalpel. Um, but I do believe, looking at the outlook, the sooner you make some of those cuts, the actually the less the impact will be over a long period of time. So I support the governor. I hope those cuts aren't 7%. I hope they're more like 2 or 3%. And then I believe that as the legislature comes back into session, one of the first things we should be doing, and I know that we're working already on a plan that will go in with a more directed uh, type of cut and cut for the last six months, if we can pass that in January. But legislators may be Democrats and Republicans, but we are not all one of one mind and, and body. And to think that we can uh, have a, two or three people come up with a plan and put it out there and then just call us back into session and we're going to vote for it and that will solve the problem. I've been there. I've done that. I have my standards and I'm not going to give those up with somebody else, say, from Seattle comes in and says, oh, I think we ought to cut levy equalization. I'm not voting for that. So it's not that simple. So this question may not be that simple either, which is, <laughs> from the audience wants to know, why do state expenditures go up every year? Oh, most of those uh, expenditures that automatically go up have been agreed to through some sort of contract. Um, the number of people that we're serving uh, grows. I see that the, uh, you know, our, we worked really hard with the BRAC procedure to make sure that we keep the military in our area. But we are bringing more and more people from the military to our area and they bring their kids and they bring their problems and they bring their issues that our firefighters and our police have to deal with. So it costs more money. So not only are revenues not going up like they should, but caseloads on issues. That's number of kids in schools. That's number of kids in the prisons. That's the number of people being served in our hospitals and our mental institutions has gone up dramatically. And in these tough times, a lot of people decide to go back to school when they lose their jobs. So even our high school or our colleges and, and uh, community colleges have increased numbers, and that costs more money. Well, I'm not in the legislature, so I don't know exactly why they vote the way they do, but absolutely the legislature um, has no fiscal, it has proven that they have no fiscal responsibility. We're spending more money than we can, uh, th than we have, and that is absolutely not right. Uh, I believe one of the, um, the, well, the, sing the single most um, threat, biggest threat to our state um, and our nation is we continue to overspend. We cannot spend at this rate anymore. We cannot continue to borrow money at this rate anymore. Um, it's one of the things that I'm most passionate about. We have got to get our budget in order, and we have to quit overspending. Um, I don't know why legislature keeps doing it, and I'm running um, to make sure we get legislature uh, turned around, let's just say. So with that, a follow-up question is, what specific cuts will you make to balance the state budget? And I'm, I'm first. Yes, um, there, there's a plethora of areas that we can cut. Um, I, I support the tax limiting initiatives because I think that it makes the legislature, uh, it forces the legislature to be fiscally responsible. But uh, let's just talk about some superfluous stuff. But in the beginning, um, we, we spend $11 million um, advertising for the lottery. I think it's a crazy expenditure. We spend $460,000 a year advertising uh, in a uh, uh, a, a, 
Hollywood film office, let's just say, to promote uh, the film industry. I think the best thing uh, to promote the film industry coming here is to reduce regulations and taxation on the film industry when they get here. If it's cheap to film here, they'll film here. We don't need an office to promote that. We're going to have to, uh, re uh, uh, in a, uh, we're going to have to look at the big uh, budget spenders. DSHS spends a lot of our budget. Uh, Department of Transportation spends a lot of our budget. So there's going to have to be reforms in all these uh, departments. Thank you. Well, that's a long way from $3 billion. And education is over, by the time you get done, is over 50% of our budget. And some of the things that we do, we don't have to do. We don't have to have kids on health care. We don't have to have the basic health plan. We don't necessarily have to have the state need grant that supports kids when they're going back to school. We don't have to have the work study program. We don't have to have 4-H funding. We don't have to have funding for Boys and Girls Club. But those are all going to have impacts on the day in, day out lives of people in our district that also pay taxes. It's a huge balancing act, but that's the only place you're going to find $3 billion. There are little things you can do to consolidate some agencies, maybe do away with the Department of Information Services, maybe you can close the printers, but by the time you get done, you've saved maybe a few hundred million. It's still a long way from $3 billion. The cuts are going to be made, and it's going to hurt everybody. So looking at the uh, revenue situation from a different angle, the question is, how will you work to create a more equitable or less regressive tax structure in the state? Happy? Well, this, the tax structure in this state it relies heavily on a sales tax. And that sales tax is considered regressive because people who do not make as much money, say less than $35,000 a year, pay a higher and higher percentage of their income in taxes. Whereas rich people pay actually one or two or less than 5%. Um, on the other hand, I believe our sales tax works because you can make decisions not to spend money. Um, I'm not a real supporter of an income tax. I've seen the states that have income taxes and I don't see them doing any better than we are and Oregon would be one of them. Um, I do believe that our local property taxes are way out of line and they got really blown out of line when the price of a house went double and triple and I think all of us knew in our heart of hearts they weren't really worth that much, but we're paying those taxes. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I do hear people say that our current uh, tax is regressive. It, it, uh, in, for the government, in the government's eye, it could be regressive. Um, but the idea that somebody can choose to pay taxes or not is, is why I like the sales tax. We do not tax food, so if you're suffering and you do not, and, and you do not have the money to buy um, other, uh, let's say, lavish things, you can choose to uh, not pay sales tax. Um, and in, in that case, the state's revenue goes down. Well, I think at that point in time, the state has an obligation to reduce with the population. The population can't afford big government or bigger government, so the, uh, the government has to uh, uh, reduce in size. Uh, I think our current stat tax structure with our uh, dependence on uh, property taxes uh, could be reformed. There, some of the reforms we're ta they've talked about is fixing your property taxes until you sell your property. So uh, I'm out of time. Thank you so much. So. Staying with taxes, this one goes um, quite to the heart of the matter. And the question simply is, will you raise taxes? Absolutely not. Okay. I would hope not. Um, there will be a lot of cuts made before we get back to even thinking about raising taxes. And I think if the 960 comes back into play, that we all know that's not gonna, it's not going to fly. And we're not going to find a 60% majority to change it. I felt that taxes on gum and candy and pop and water made more sense than a general sales tax increase. Um, but I do believe that our local property taxes are 
the thing that's, that's really hurting the middle income the most, and I will not vote for anything that increases those taxes in any way. Thank you. So let's move on to business, and the question is, do you understand the relationship between stimulating business growth and increased revenues? And if so, how do you plan to stimulate growth so our state can recover from this recession? Kathy. Well, it's, you know, stimulating growth is, uh, from the level of a legislator, it, it's a little um, difficult to see the direct connection. I think our state has tried to create a base industry, and I think building industry is one of them, by trying to keep our capital projects moving forward, such as, um, as painful as it is, to fund the um, construction of the sewer system in Belfair creates a system where those businesses can grow. You have to have the infrastructure. And we are lacking that sorely in many parts of our district. So as painful as it was to get home last night driving through Belfair, that sewer system I fought hard for and coordinated effort between the county and federal government to get the funding to get it done on time under budget, and what happened was the economy went down and we're actually getting it for almost 30% less than what it was originally proposed to be. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I absolutely understand. If, if we cut regulation and taxation on business, business is gonna, uh, businesses will relocate to the state of Washington. Um, and we will have uh, more people at work with, and have more tax revenue uh, to support the services that the state has to have so it is the best stimulus that this state can provide to the to, to the citizens is reducing taxation and regulation on, uh, imposed on business. The one of the things state the legislature again it's really um, uh, disappointing me that they've shown no shown no leadership in is uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure is failing here. Our, our freight infrastructure is uh, dismal in comparison to mo many other states. Um, we must have an emphasis on freight infrastructure development soon. Boeing has warned us for years that they're leaving the state, and one of the reasons they're leaving is because we absolutely ignore their ability to move goods and services in and out of the state. Thank you. 